This is the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of interpreting the graph of the velocity function. So the first thing to note on this first example problem, um, the names on your notes outline might be different than the uh, ones that I'm going to go over, but just change them accordingly to whatever is on your outline. So uh, my example, it says Vina rides her bicycle from her home to Kalita's home, starting at t equals zero minutes, and arriving at Kalita's house at t equals 15. During the time interval from zero to 15, her velocity v of t in miles per minute is modeled by the piecewise linear function whose graph is shown below. So this is the graph of Vina's velocity. And part A says, after leaving home, Vina realizes she dropped her calculus home and she returns to get it. At what time does she turn around to go get it? Give a reason for your answer. So if you want to figure out when she turns around, the easiest way is to just draw yourself a number line right underneath the graph that represents the velocity. V of t, since that's what her velocity is labeled as. And since the graph is the same thing as our number line, whenever that's the case, what we're going to be looking at is the y values of function. So the y values, you can see they start off being positive here. zero right there at zero, but then positive until we get to four, we're at zero, then negative until seven, and then positive the rest of the way until 15 or back to zero. So this shows us, well, when the velocity is positive, she's heading towards Kalita's home. When the velocity is negative, she's heading away from Kalita's home. So the place where she turns around would be at time four. In this case, miles per minute, velocity is at four minutes. So we can say Lena turns around. reason for your answer? Since, well, since the velocity, v of t, changes from positive to negative at t equals 4. So we don't want to specify it's from positive to negative because at time 7, the velocity also changes sign, but it changes from negative to positive. So that's time 7 is when she gets her homework, presumably. She finds it there and then turns back around to head to uh, play this out. Okay. All right, let's take a look at part B now. Part B says... Find the acceleration, if it exists, of Vina's bicycle at t equals 4, t equals 10, and t equals 12. If it does not exist, explain why. Indicate units of measure. So acceleration, if we were to draw a number line for acceleration over here, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So now we can look at something different. So for acceleration, A of t, we'd be looking at the slope. The derivative is the slope of the function. So we're drawing our number line, we'll now be looking at the slope rather than the y values. So the slope starts off being positive until we get to 3. At 3, we can see we have a corner there, an abrupt change in the slope. So it does not exist there. 
then the slope is negative until we get to 5, another corner, where it does not exist. And the slope is positive all the way until 10, another corner, so it does not exist. And then the levels off the slope is 0 until we get to 13, another corner, where it does not exist. And then the slope is negative until 15. Let's now look at the times we're looking for. We're at time 4. So, it is acceleration times 4 is the same as the derivative of velocity. So let's look at 4 on our graph here. 4 is right there. So it's on this line segment. So we want to find the exact slope on that line segment. You can use the two endpoints if you want, you, but I'm just going to use since we know it goes through 4, 0 there. 4, 0. And I'll also use the point right here, which is 3. And careful, it's not 2, it's 0 0.2. Look at the scale on the side of it. So we take the difference of the y's, 0 0.2 minus 0, over the difference of the x's, 3 minus 1. Us 0 0.2 over negative 1. So that's just negative 0 0.2. Or if you want to make a fraction, that's 2 tenths, which is reduces to 1 fifth. So negative 1 fifth, either way is fine. And in the units, remember the units for velocity or miles per minute. So it's miles per minute per minute, which is usually written as miles per minute squared. Now let's look at time 10. Well, 10, we're right here. Notice 10 is right at a corner. There. So remember we said the acceleration does not exist. So it does not exist, but it says if it does not exist, explain why. So we can say A of 10 does not exist, or D and E if you want. And then the reason would be since what's happening at a corner is the slopes are not approaching the same value. So it's not a nice smooth transition. So we want to say that limit, as in this case it's not really x, it's t. So as t approaches 10, the left of not v of t, because v of t this actually does meet up left and right. It's connected, it's continuous there. But it's the derivative or slope. So you can either put v prime of t or a of t does not equal the limit as t approaches 10 from the right of v prime of t. Now let's look at time 12. The acceleration of time 12, if we go back to our graph here. 12 is right here, but we can see the acceleration on that right there is just zero. You could put miles per minute squared, but really zero is zero no matter what the units are. Right, let's take a look at part C now. So this one says, suppose. Angel starts riding the skateboard from his home to Kalia's home at t equals 0 minutes, arriving at Kalia's home at t equals 16. During the time interval 0 to 16, his velocity v of t in miles per minute is modeled by this velocity function given by capital V of t. So who traveled farther, Vina or Angel? Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so whenever you're just talking about the distance traveled, You want the total distance someone traveled. Well, to get distance is like position. So to get from velocity to position, you have to integrate. Since when you to get velocity, you take the derivative of the position part. So you do integrate. So if you want the total distance of 
something on traveling on some interval from A to B. It equals the integral from A to B. You might think it's just the velocity on that. But in order to make it the total distance traveled, it actually needs to be not just the velocity, but the speed. The absolute value of velocity, okay. which is called speed. So that's what you actually have to do to make the speed function. And the reason why you do that, if we look back here, let's go ahead and calculate um, the area, which is what the integral, definite integral represents, the area between the curve and the x-axis here, in this case the t-axis. So if we take, calculate the area of this triangle right here, that would be 1 half, the base is 4, the height is 0 0.2, that gives you, four, 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 times 0 0.2, that's 0 0.4. And this triangle is below the x-axis, so when we find the definite integral, that would be negative, so it would be 1 half. The base here is 3. The height is 0.2 also. So zero, um, 1 half times 0 0.2, that's 1.5, 3 halves. 1 half times 3, I should say, and then times 0 0.2 would give you 0 0.3. That is negative. So if we didn't put the absolute value there, then we would sit, if we added these two together, if we just integrated velocity, the integral of velocity would be, from 0 to 7, would just be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 would be 0 0.1. But you can see that's not really how far V to travel. That's 0 0.1 is her displacement, or how far... Uh, she is from where she started, because she went 0 0.4 miles towards Glenn's home, then she went 0 0.3 miles back towards her home. So she's 0 0.1 away from her house. So that's displacement. But the total distance traveled is actually 0 0.7, you can see. So that's why we need the absolute value to take the uh, distances here that are negative and make them positive. That's why we need to create speed when you want the total distance traveled. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's start with Vina here. So her distance traveled would be the integral from 0 to 15. So when her boss function applies, she arrived at place on the t equals 15. So from 0 to 15. And again, it's the integral of speed, or the absolute, which is the absolute value of velocity. So we've already figured out those first two. First one was 0 0.4. And because of the absolute value signs, it turns that negative 0 0.3 into a positive 0 0.3. And then we just have to calculate the rest of the area closing the curve. So, We can figure this out. You can split it up into two triangles and a rectangle if you want, or if you just want to do it as one trapezoid, that might be easier. So I'm going to just do it as one trapezoid and find, okay, so we've got one half. The width here of this trapezoid is three. And really the one half is there to average the base of those two sides that are parallel from seven to 15, that's eight, plus from 10 to 13, that's three. So we have 3 halves times 11, which is 33 over 2. And since we've got this all in decimal, let's put this in a decimal also. So, so 2 goes into 33 16 times. That would be 32. And then there's 1 left over, 16 and a half, or in this case, 16.5. So that's what we'll add. Yeah, that was all up. Let's see, we get 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 is 
0 0.7 plus 16.5 gives you 17.2. And the units here would be what? So that's how far beta travels. Oops, and I just realized I made a mistake there. This width here is not 3, but I forgot it's 0 0.3. I thought that seemed a little bigger. So 0 0.3, so it's actually one-tenth of that. <coughs> so if we multiply by one-tenth, it's actually 1.65. Sorry about that. The decimal in the wrong place, which makes a big difference there. So 1.65. Now let's go ahead and add them up again. We'll get a different answer there. So now it's 0 0.7 plus 1.65 gives you 2.35. So that's how far it's going to come for you. Now let's look at Angel. With Angel, instead of the graph, we have his equation for his velocity right here. Angel, will integrate, he uh, travels on, arrives at t plus 16, so it's from 0 to 16 instead of 0 to 15. Again, absolute i, but this time it's capital V of t, because that's his velocity. So first thing I notice is, well, would the absolute value affect this velocity equation on 0 to 16 or not? And if you plug in 0, had 0 anything greater than 0 up to 16, it's all going to give you a positive answer. So if he doesn't uh, backtrack at all, it looks like his velocity stays positive the whole way after 0. So in this case, the absolute value has no effect on his. So we'll just integrate it like normal. We go to 0 to 16. 20th, square root of t, t. So to integrate that, what we can do is we can pull out the constant of 1 20th. Integral from 0 to 16. And then we've got t to the 1 half. And then we integrate t to the 1 half, that gives you t to the 3 halves, times 2 thirds, times it from 0 to 16. You can pull out the 2 thirds, 2 goes into 20 10 times, and you can pull out 3 times 10, so that's 1 30th. Times, if we switch that to right form, that's the square root of t cubed, divided from 0 to 16. And substitute in the 16, the square root of 16 cubed, minus the square root of 0 cubed. So the square root of 16 is 4 cubed is 64, and that square root of 0 is just 0, so 1 30th times 64 and divide those both by 2, gives you 32 over 15. We write that as our next number, 15 goes into 32 twice, 2 30, and there's two 15 things. So, angel travels, total distance of 2 and 2 15 months which you can see is a little bit smaller than 2.35 miles. So we showed the work of these transfers, so Vina travels farther. 
if you want to know how much farther she travels, you can just take 2.35 minus 2 and 2 fifteenths. Remember, both the fractions are already used. Alright, now let's take a look at part D, a slightly different question. It says, now who li actually lives farther from Clea's home? So when we're looking at who lives farther away, we're going to be looking at their displacement. How far they are away from when they started. And when you're doing displacement, you just integrate velocity without um, the absolute value, it's negative speed. So now for Vina, the integral from 0 to 15 of just V of T dt without the absolute value. Because now, if we look back at the graph, we want to know how far she actually lives away from uh, Kalia's home. We'll actually take the 0 0.4 and we'll leave this negative. 0.3 and then add the 1.65. Because really, after seven minutes here, she's only 0.1 away from uh, away from what, her home where she started. So 0.4, this time we'll be, we'll leave it, negative 0.3 plus the 1.65. 0 0.1 plus 1.65. So, Dean actually only uh, lives 1.75 miles away from Cleo's home. She just ended up having to travel an extra 0.6 miles because she went back from 0.3 in her home. Now, for Angel, though, remember the absolute value of his didn't do anything. It was always positive anyway, so we don't have to do this again. We'll just write it there. So for his displacement, how far is from where he started? That would still be the same answer we got from this one. Because right? obviously I didn't affect him so it'd still be two and two fifteenths. So no need to integrate that again. So that's how that's far how far he traveled, and that's how far he lives away because he didn't backtrack at all. So even though Clea, uh, sorry, Dina traveled further, Angel actually lives farther away. And again, we showed the work right here. Take a look at another example. This one says a squirrel starts at building A at time t equals zero and travels along a straight horizontal wire connected to building B. From zero to twenty, the squirrel's velocity in feet per second is modeled by the piecewise linear function shown in the graph below. So this represents the squirrel's velocity. A similar question to the other one. After leaving building A, the squirrel realizes it left its acorn back at building A and returns to building A. At what time does the squirrel, squirrel turn around and head back to building A? So again, if we draw our velocity, number line right underneath this. Again, since this is the graph of the squirrel's velocity, look at the y values when we're drawing this number line. So y values start off being positive until we get to 4. Or 0, or negative until we get to 7. Then notice from 7 to 8 the velocity is 0. So 8 where it's also 0, and then it's positive. Okay, so where did the squirrel turn around and head back to building A? Looks like he turned around right at time four. So 
This one's velocity change from pause when I get. And that's what we can do to give a reason for it. Let's say squirrel turned around and headed back to building A. This time, though, notice the units for velocity here are feet per second. So that means times in seconds. So four seconds. And then to give a reason for answer, which is just like justify it, is since d of t equals velocity changes from positive to negative. at t equals 4 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the next part there. At what time does the squirrel arrive back at building A? Give a reason for your answer. Well, if we look back at the graph here and find these areas, you can see, well, we've got one half, the base is 4, the height here is 3, so that's a triangle has an area of 6. And if we go 1 half in this triangle, the base is 3, height is 4. We also get 6, but it's below the x-axis or t-axis here, so it's negative 6. So you can see what this shows is, since these are the same area, but opposite side, for the first 4 seconds, the squirrel traveled 6 feet away from building A, but then he traveled 6 feet right back. The other direction, so he's right back at building A at time seven. So that's when he arrives back. And then from seven to eight seconds, and presumably he's just he's just staying there because the velocity is zero. So maybe it takes a little second, takes a second to pick up that acorn. So when does the squirrel arrive back at building A? So that let's say the squirrel arrives back. Building A at t equals 7 seconds. And here, the uh, mathematical way to give a reason for answer, the reason why we know he's right back at building A, was since the integral from 0 to 7 of his velocity function equals, well, 6 minus 6 is just 0. So his displacement is 0, so he's back right where he started. Then part C says find the total distance the squirrel travels during the time interval 0 to 20. So remember, for total distance, you integrate not just velocity, but speed. So on this interval, you have the integral from 0 to 20 of the absolute value of velocity. If you want to know the total distance he travels. So we've already got those first areas, would be 6. And then we're going to change that to a plus 6, because the absolute value changes that to a positive. And let's go back and find all the way to 20 here, the rest of those areas. So this one I think I'll split up here. The other one's a whole trapezoid. This one, let's go ahead and split this up. We'll do the triangle there. Triangle, and then we'll do two trapezoids. So this triangle would be one half. The base is 3, height is 4, so we get 6. This rectangle, base is 3, height is 4, 12. This trapezoid, 1 half, the width is 2. So we're averaging the basis, so it's 1 plus the other side that's parallel has a width of 4. And the twos would cancel there, we can do it 1 plus 4 and 5. And the trapezoid over here, 1 half the base is 4. And the 4, and the two heights that you average there are 1 and 2. 
So 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 times the 1 plus 2, 3 gives you 6. So we'd also have the 6 plus 12 plus 5 plus 6. So if we add those all up, let's see, that's 6 times 4 is 24 plus 12 is 36 plus 5 gives you 41. So the 41 in the units here are feet. So the squirrel travels a total distance of 41 feet on that tender rule. Then our D says, at what time is the squirrel farthest from building A? And how far from building A is the squirrel at that time? So when it says farthest, that's like the most or the maximum would be the calculus term. So and since it doesn't specify, we're talking about the absolute maximum. And since we're talking about how far it is, that's the absolute max, maximum position or distance. So what you would use there is the number line for the velocity. Because whatever you're trying to minimize or maximize, you use its derivative. And the derivative position is velocity. So if we look back at our number line here, see, based on the velocity, the increase, this position would be increasing, decreasing, constant, and then increasing. So if we draw what that looks like here, increasing, decreasing, constant, and then increasing. So the absolute maximum position potentially could be at two possible places. It could either be here at a relative max, which was at four, or it could be at the end point of 20. So if you want to figure out which one actually has a maximum position there, you just compare the two by looking at their compared displacements, how far it is away from a building A at those times. So from time 4, you can look at the integral from 0 to 4. Which uh, just velocity, not the absolute right, would be uh, that area was just six, so it's six feet away from building A at time four. And the other one would be the integral from zero to 20 of, again, just velocity, which I'm not the absolute value because we're looking for displacement, how far he is from building A. So that one would be the six plus, this time it's plus six. We can leave it, we change, I'm sorry, it's minus six, my bad. Um, we leave it negative because we're not doing the absolute value. And then plus 6, plus 12, plus 5, plus 6. So those 6's cancel out. We get 6 plus 6, 12, plus 12, 24, plus 5, so 29. So comparing this answer to part C, the squirrel traveled 41 feet, but he actually, his displacement is only 29 feet. He's only 29 feet because of his, as he did backtrack the squirrel. So we can see, well, Two things. At what time is the squirrel far from building A and how far from building A is the squirrel at that time? So there's two things we're answering. So we can say the squirrel is farthest from building A at T equals 20, and then this for time every seconds. Let's say when the squirrel is 29 feet from building A. And then part E says at times 3 and 11, find the acceleration of the squirrel. I'll explain why it doesn't have this. So let's look at those two times here. Again, we can draw our number line for acceleration right underneath the graph. Again, since we have the graph of velocity, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so the derivative graphically is the slope. So 
So the slope starts off positive until we get to 2, where it does not exist. I'm just going to run it over here, so I'm just use a D to abbreviate for it does not exist. Then it's negative until 4. We've got a corner there. See? So at 4, also does not exist. Then it's negative again until 5, another corner. That does not exist there. And positive until 7. At 7, it does not exist. Between 7 and 8, the slope is 0. And at 8, another quarter, so it doesn't exist. And then the slope is positive all the way until 11. Where another corner doesn't exist. And the slope is 0 until we get to 14. Another corner, so it doesn't exist. And it's negative until 16. Like this, and then positive the rest of it. So let's look at the time we were trying to find it at time three. Let's put our graph at time three. Three is right there, so it's a little hard to tell exactly what that point is. So we want this exact slope of that line segment, so just look at the endpoints again. Points of that point are two, three. Points at that point are 4, 0. So if we find the slope between those two points, 3 minus 0 over 2 minus 4. We get negative 3 halves. And the units here, since velocity is in feet per second, this would be feet per second per second, which we need to write as feet per second squared. And then if we look back at the graph at time 11, you can see, well, 11 is right at the corner right there. So it doesn't exist, the acceleration. So we can say... Acceleration at 11 does not exist since, and again we can use the limits to justify why it does not exist, the limit as t approaches 11 from the left of uh, e prime of t over uh, a of t, same thing, does not equal the limit as t approaches 11 from the right. Okay, let's look at our next part here. It says at time 4.5, is the squirrel speeding up, slowing down, or neither? That's the final answer. Okay, so speeding up, another way of saying speed is increasing. Slowing down, another way of saying your speed decreasing, and then neither means the speed is constant. Okay, so remember, in order for speed to be increasing, the acceleration and velocity have to be working together in the same direction. So to make speed increasing, what would have to be true is b of t and a of t are the same sign. In other words, both positive or both negative. Speed is to be decreased and acceleration and velocity are working against each other. So that means b of t and a of t are opposite signs. And for speed to be constant, that means 
path acceleration would have to be zero, because that would be keeping the velocity constant. As we can see back at our graph, we'll look at when the acceleration was zero. Right here on the interval from 11 to 14, the acceleration was zero, because there was a velocity, or in this case the same as speed, because it's positive, would be remaining a constant of four. Okay, so let's look at 4.5. And we really just need to find the velocity, 4.5, just determine if it's positive or negative, and the acceleration, determine if that's positive or negative. So if we look back at the graph, at 4.5, right about there, roughly, you can see. In our normal area, we can see the y values were negative, so the velocity is negative, and the slope was also negative. So acceleration is negative. So they're both negative. So we have 4.5 is less than zero, and a of 4.5 is less than zero. So they're the same sign, that means the speed is increasing. That means you're getting faster and then heading back towards um, building A in this case. So we can say at T equals 4.5. Let's just turn this question into a statement here. The squirrel is speeding up. Since V of 4.5 plus than 0 and V of 4.5. All right, now let's take a look at one more partner. It says write expressions for the squirrel's acceleration, velocity, and distance from building A that are valid for the interval 11 to 16. So now we're not looking at the entire graph, which would have a lot of pieces to it, just the interval from 11 to 16. Let's look back at our graph here and see which segment that refers to. So from 11 to 16, 11's right there, 16 is right there. So you can see right there that would require two pieces. Okay. Whereas if we did the whole graph, it would have a whole bunch of pieces. So we're just looking on that here. So let's start with the easiest one to write, which is acceleration, because acceleration is just the slope of each of these. So you can see the slope from 11 to 14 is just zero. And the slope of this segment here from 11, 14 to 16, you can take the difference of the coordinates here. You can just look graphically. It goes down three, right two. So a negative three halves would be the slope. So that would be the acceleration of that. So let's go ahead and write that in the piecewise function here. So our acceleration would be zero, the slope was zero there, or so it doesn't have to be equal to there, so from 11 to 14. And I'm not going to put the equal to at the 14 on either piece, because at 14 there was a corner, so remember the acceleration does not exist there. And then the slope of that second segment, remember we calculate was negative three halves, and that's from 14. So oh, there's the first one, last one. There's our acceleration. Now let's go to the next easiest one, the velocity. Well, we have the graph of velocity. So I'm going to write down the velocity, V of T. And it's going to have two pieces to it. Let's go back and see the equation of that first piece. So the first piece, the equation of that first piece is... Uh, just a horizontal line. So you can see this is equation for this would just be y equals four. So the velocity on that part is just four. Or eleven. This time I'm going to include the equal to because that four velocity at fourteen times fourteen that velocity is actually four. They made up it. Or you could put it on the other piece. The other piece is a little tougher. We can we know it's a linear equation, 
So in general, I could write like y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. But we know in our case, the particular slope we found was negative 3 halves. So we just need to find what that y intercept would be. We can do that by plugging in a point there for x and y, in this case t and v of t. So let's find one point on that line. So I'll just use this point right here, which is 16, 1. Plug it to solve for the y intercept. We could use the other end point as well, either way. So y is 1 when x is 16. Keep solving this for b. So 2 goes into 16 8 times, times negative 3 is negative 24. So we get b, our y-intercept is 25. So if we substitute that right back in here, that would give us our equation. When we put it in here, we don't put the y equals here because that's really d of t. And we just have to change, change our x to t. So that would be negative 3 halves t. Here's the one intercept that was 25, plus 25. And that applies for the interval from 14. So I already put the equal to here, I'm not going to put it here. To 16. Oops. That one shouldn't have an equal to either because of the noise in. Um, in between uh, 11 and 16, not including either one. So there would be your velocity. And the one that takes the most work here is the position function. So remember, to get velocity from position, you take the derivative of position gives you velocity. So that means in order to get back to position, you'd have to integrate. So we get our position function, the x of t. And we get an integral of velocity. But because velocity has two pieces to it, it's a piecewise function, we'll have to do this position of two pieces as well. So to get the first piece, I'll call it x sub 1 of t. We integrate the first part of the velocity, which is just 4. So the first part of the position of function, x sub 1 of t, integral 4 with a variable t would be 4t, plus some constant. I'm going to just call it c sub 1, since we're going to have another constant and the other piece. And then for the other part, x sub 2 of t, that's going to be the integral of the other piece, the negative 3 halves t plus 25 dt. We get negative 3 halves times t squared over 2 plus 25t plus the non of constant c sub 2. So that would simplify to be negative 3 fourths t squared plus 25t plus our second unknown constant. So what we need to know is what is what are these two constants, c sub 1 and c sub 2? So the way we can do that is by plugging in a point on the position function. So we need to know the squirrel's position at some time. And the easiest way to do that is we know the break point that both of these pieces share is 14. So if we find the squirrel's position at time 14, we can use that on both pieces. So to get at the squirrel's position at time 14, x of 14, that would just be integral from 0 to 14 of d of t dt. So that would be the displacement where its position is. So if we go back to our graph, from 0 to 14, we add those up, 6 minus 6 plus 6 plus 12. Let's 
six to cancel out, and you get 18. So the point we can use on a position function here is 14 18. We know that's the score position at time 14 is 18. And since that's the breakpoint that both of these position functions share, we can use it for both of these. So let's start with this one here. So we know the squirrel's position is 18, whereas time is 14. So 14 times 4, 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 4 is 16, 40 plus 16 is 56. So c sub 1 equals negative 38, and subtract 56. And on the other piece, we plug in 18 position when time is 14. So we don't have to square 14. Just remember 14 is made up of 7 and 2. Right? So if you square those separately, four, 2 squared is 4, so that will cancel out the 4 right there. So then all that's left is a 7 squared, which is 49, times negative 3 gives you negative 147. Since 50 times 3 is 150, 49 times 3 would be uh, one, 3 less than 147. And then 25 times 14. Well, just think if you've got 14 quarters, how much money is that? Or if you go 10 times 250, it's 10 times 25 is 250. 4 times 25 is 100. 250 and uh, 100 would be 350. Keep going there. 315 minus 147 is 253. Wait, that's not right. 203, sorry. And then subtract the 203 gives you negative 185 for C sub 2. So now we can write our whole position function using those constants here. So x of t would equal the first piece is 4t plus c sub 1, which we figured is negative 38. 4t minus 38. And that applies an interval from 11. 14. Again, you can put the equal to sign on either part piece because they're the same position. And the second piece, you have over here, and the negative 3 fourths t squared plus 25t, and then plus our unknown constant there, which we found was negative 85, so it's no longer unknown. So it'd be negative 3 fourths t squared plus 25t minus 185 for the interval from 14 16. And that concludes the notes on the topic of interpreting the graph of the velocity function.